hi friends and welcome back to the channel today for another furniture makeover so i'm really excited about this transformation because i'm actually redoing a piece that i did back in maybe 2020 when i first got started and i had no idea what i was doing so um, this is a piece that we're going to be keeping and i just need to do it all over it's going in our bedroom so that's pretty much the plan now as you can see it's um, there's paint strokes the paint is gritty the paint is chipping and i also paint it directly over the hardware and it's, it's just in really rough shape so i have quite a bit of work ahead of me but i'm really excited and i don't want to waste any further time let's go ahead and just jump right into this transformation Okay, so per usual, I always start by removing the hardware and I just thought this was so hilarious to see how I painted this back in the day. <laughs> but moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and enter into the stripping process. I'm using this Easy Clean Bio Stripper. So Dunn Edwards was kind enough to lend me a couple of samples and I'm really excited to review this product for you guys today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it all over. I'm working in sections. Now I definitely could have been a little bit more generous with the product, but I really was trying to make the, the bottle stretch as far as I could because I knew that this would be a massive undertaking. And so I'm just brushing it on with a little Dollar Tree Store brush, and then I'm gonna wrap it in plastic and let it sit for about 20 minutes. I really just waited for the product to make the paint crinkle up you'll see that in the next clip um but it really just said on the bottle to wait anywhere from five minutes to 24 hours so it's just kind of um, a judgment call so because i wanted to make that stripper stretch as far as i can i decided to go ahead and use my electric sander wherever i could and I just figured that the drawer fronts would be a good opportunity to do that. So I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper now, and then I'm gonna work my way up to a 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm pretty much gonna stop with a 120 because that's all I need in order to do my scuff sanding. After that, I am gonna hand sand the edges with a sanding block wrapped in sandpaper, and I do intend on making the investment in the foam pads. If you haven't heard about them, they're pretty awesome from what I can see at least. Um, they really just protect you from ruining any detailed edges. And so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so now for the satisfying part, I'm just gonna remove the paint using this plastic scraper that I got at the dollar store. And as you can see, it's coming up like butter. I was so impressed. I wish you guys could have seen my face. Um, yeah, no, no bad things to say about this product i definitely could have been more generous but i'll just keep that in mind going forward but yeah it worked out really well and i was grateful Okay, so honestly, this step that I'm doing here is rather unnecessary. I just did this because I wanted to compare and contrast. The last time I worked with a piece that had these buttons, I just sanded right over top of them and I felt like I could still see where they were. So I wanted to experiment with my own furniture and I figured if I take them out and fill it with wood filler, then maybe it would be a little bit more seamless. Um, I can't really say that that's the case, but I'll show you guys what I did going forward to make it the most seamless as I possibly could. But moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and strip back the doors. The doors were the trickiest part for me. Um, so on one door, I did use the stripper, and then on the other door, I sanded it by hand. They were both tedious in their own way. So, so what I ended up doing is I just applied that stripper, let it sit in a trash bag for quite some time and then I came back and scrubbed it back with 
this dollar store brush and it left me with a really sticky messy residue so here I am trying to kind of rectify the situation I use my drill attachments with some Dawn dish soap and some warm water and I just kind of scrubbed it all over and that definitely did help Okay, so now I'm just gonna wrap up this day with some last minute sanding. And then I pretty much repeated the process the next day off camera. And by day three, I finished and here's where we are. Okay, so I quickly wanted to hop on and let you guys know that I did spray over my hardware holes using some clear spray paint. Um, it didn't quite work out the best for me. I know you can use clear shellac, but also again, I'm, I'm just really meticulous. So to the average person, it might not be that deep, but I'll show you guys a few clips from now what I did to make it even more seamless in just a bit. For now, we're just gonna move on to the priming process. Okay, so if you've been around for a while, you already know that I like to use the Zen Bin Shellac Base Primer, and I just ended up doing two coats all over. So I'll be sure to link my gun down below for anyone that's interested. My paint gun and my primer gun are the exact same. And with all of that being said, I'm just gonna let you guys vibe out with me. Okay, so I did also want to mention that I did consider doing some real creative things with this arm wire, such as adding some burlap to the center of the doors or changing out the base and, you know, adding some more modern legs. But because this piece is rather sentimental to the family, I didn't really want to take those risks. And I think it turned out fine. You'll see for yourself in the end what you think, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight. So I did boil the hardware in a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water and then I scrubbed it using some fine steel wool and then for these hardware holes I took my filler primer I just sprayed that and I let it sit overnight and then I came back and sanded it down with a 220 grit sandpaper and I think the results were pretty good um, I could still kind of see where they were but it's nothing that it just nothing that stands out to the natural eye you kind of have to be looking for it so I'm satisfied and now for the painting process I'm just gonna go in with two coats of my evil eclipse by Gemini this is my favorite paint I use this paint without a top coat I've used it a few times before I love it I love the finish of it it looks very luxe and just very it's just not your average paint finish I don't even really know how to describe it it's just it's beautiful to me I get this from Dunn Edwards and I purchased it in a flat but it looks more satin in my opinion. So I've used it before in my home, like I said, and I know that it 
it is very durable and um I'm, i plan to continue to use it and i just yeah i hope you guys check it out but with all of that being said there's nothing really left to tell you so again let's just vibe out So by the way, literally right before I started spraying the paint, I remembered I needed to do the drawer tracks. Unfortunately, by that point, I had already painted the drawer fronts, so it was just a sticky situation. I didn't record it for you guys this time, but if you want to see the step-by-step -step process of replacing a drawer track, I encourage you to check out my most recent nightstand makeover video. I definitely showed the process over there. But um, yeah, it's a really tedious process, but it's always the same. So I really <laughs> wasn't in the mood to try to refilm and re-explain that process. Um, but just know I did do that off camera. So now all of my drawer tracks are working properly. Okay, so I'm not really sure how many of you guys keep up with my community post, but that's where I really try to just keep you guys up to date on what's going on with me and where I've been. And so if you've kept up with me, you would know that I had some issues getting my hardware. So I had to order something completely different and here I am just going ahead to measure my holes. So the way I do it is I don't have that fancy tool. I did order one, but I ordered it used and it was missing something, so I had to send it back but I just measure everything with a ruler and a measuring tape. So I, I took the old hardware hole that was closest to the outer edge of the drawer and I marked a little dot. And then from there, I just kind of measured five inches across and I really kill an inch. So I'm always going from, say for instance, the hardware is five inches across. I'm going from the one inch mark to the six inch mark and then I'm measuring from the top as well, just so that they're even on both sides. I guess you guys don't really need me to tell you that, but <laughs> I figured I would just say it anyway. So I'm gonna show you guys the next step because the next step is actually informative. I think you guys could really benefit from the information that I'm getting ready to share. Okay, so basically I just wanna show you that whenever you have screws that are too long, you can actually just cut them down to size. So I'm measuring the size that I need here, and then I'm just gonna screw this screw into this tool. Now, I don't know the proper name for this tool, but I call it a screw cutter. I think it's a wire cutter or something like that. And then I just squeeze as tight as I can, and the screw will just break for you. Now, the one that I have takes a lot of elbow grease, but you get what you pay for. I got mine really inexpensively at Harbor Freight, but I'm sure they make others that cut more like butter, but that's just, for your reference, I got the idea from Instagram. You can learn a ton of information over there. Excuse the car in the background, oh my gosh. But with that being said, that pretty much wraps up this video and now we're just gonna get ready to get into the before and after. Keep watching.